So, anybody want to take a guess what we're working on this week? If you say we're working on the, uh, the old hard body here, couldn't be more wrong. True, it's in the shop, and uh, but I don't have parts for it, and uh, I just need to take a break. You know? Things going, how they're going, that's what we're going to do. So, it's a beautiful day here in Southern Maryland, and it got me thinking about... Uh, Riding motorcycles, right? I mean, why wouldn't it? One in particular that I ain't been riding. And uh, that's this guy right there. So in this episode of Puglisi Speed Shop, I'm going to give you the story behind my 1974 shovelhead. guys so like I said I'm gonna tell you all about my 74 shovel head um, now you know in order for me to tell you this story I gotta tell at least like one or two others right I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best all right so I used to ride constantly right I started riding in like 99 my buddy Greg taught me how to ride on this what was it a 89 Kawasaki Ninja EX 500 oh yeah Serious machine. Actually, it's probably the most reliable bike on the planet. Uh, he scooped it up for like a couple hundred bucks, rode it for a while, went and got something new, and I scooped it up from him for a couple hundred bucks. Rode it um, for a couple years, like every day to work. I was like, and it was like 90 miles, one way to work, you know. So it's, uh, I rode the hell out of it. I was 20 something years old, and one day I was riding like a jackass, uh, way beyond my level of of skill at that point and probably beyond the bikes trying to make a turn on that thing and if you know anything about an ex 500 yeah it might look like a cross rocket but it ain't uh like in the 90s and um little turn thing said 35 and yeah we went so that was that and uh i, I fixed the bike put it back together and um so i ride it again a little bit but then we were transferring to the East Coast, so I ended up selling it. And somehow, I made a couple hundred bucks on it, which was amazing. But, um, yeah, that was it. And uh, I didn't ride for, a, for a long, like a long time after that. I did buy, like, I had like a little bobber. I kind of, well, I bought it as a project, made a bobber out of it. Never even rode it. Gave it to my brother. He lost it. I don't, yeah. Not Joey, my other brother. But Anthony lost it and um, found it years later. Stripped down. <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, yeah. So, didn't have a bike the whole time I was on the East Coast. Came back to California. I bought a boat. I bought a 78 Omega jet boat. It was a bow rider. had a 460 in it. It looked great. It ran, like, <laughs> terribly. Way too much carburetor for the motor. We couldn't get it running right. Uh, finally did, and it blew up. I'll, uh, I'll have the kid put a, put a picture of the piss that we pulled out of that thing. So, uh, yeah, she was no good. Got the motor rebuilt. Local engine builder that built it the first time. Solid dude uh, up there in Channel Lake. He rebuilt it. And, um, yeah. Then I couldn't get it timed right. You put on the hose in the driveway, it was dead on. And uh, the second I put on the lake, it was sputtering and backfiring. And I figured out I'm not a boat guy. So... Put it on Craigslist, right? And the guy hits me up the next day. Hey, if you want to trade for a 74 shovel head? I said, yeah, why not? I had a bike in years. You know, if nothing else, it takes up less space and it's probably easier to get rid of than this boat. So we trade. This is how I got got. I had my Chevy Dually. I shoot out to Bakersfield, which is like halfway between where he was coming from and I was up there in Santa Lake. 
He's got like a lifted truck and no ramp. Although he told me he had one. So what we did was I kicked the bike over because it's a kickstart only. And uh, rev it up a little bit. I kick it in gear. Everything seems to work as it should. Obviously, I didn't ride it. And we just boom, boom, down in my truck. Got it home. Went to the local uh, gas station there on base. It was like one of those like... So I backed the truck up so I didn't need a, you know, big ramp to get it off. Me and my buddy Jason, we get it off. And uh, after, <laughs> probably the first video the kid ever made, me and Jason are kicking this thing for, I don't know, felt like most of our lives. Didn't have a key on. So we um, figured that out. Andrew's commentating is hilarious. And... Uh, we get it, uh, we get it going. Right out of there, you know, first gear, I kick second, boom, neutral. I was like, oh, okay, I haven't ridden a while, that makes sense. Kick again, I'm in third, it's lugging like crazy. So, uh, get back to the thing and um, back to the house, and at the bar, it's right way back, it was kind of a weird setup. So, uh, as usual, I had the kids shoot some pictures up here as we're going, but it's a picture of me and Jay. Jay's adjusting the bars for me. And uh, we're gonna go down to the, the course on base where they do the things. He's gonna show me like little different things about riding a Harley because I was a crotch rocket guy before that. And um, so what do we do? We shoot down there and uh, again, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm in third gear. So I was like, hey dude, you know, he's a Harley guy for quite some time. So hey, man, why don't you ride this bike and tell me what's going on? So he does and uh, he says, hey dude, you ain't got no second gear, which was exactly what I figured, but I just didn't want to admit to myself. So, um, yeah, I got got. So what are you going to do, right? Well, what I did was what most hot riders do. I, well, maybe not most, but what I did, I rode that thing with, uh, with no second gear for about a year or so, just because it was super cool and I absolutely loved it. And I, I never left the town. Channel Lake is like, I don't know, maybe 20 square miles the whole town. Rode around there a lot, and that was that. And uh, never went out of town because the next town was like 60 miles away. And uh, first off, it's a shovel head, right? And uh, yeah. So fast forward another year or so, I go on deployment. My buddy Jeremy takes it and brings it to the local guy in China Lake that was like, I mean, this guy had like, I went to his shop. This guy had heads from Singapore sent him like for him to build because the dude was like, yeah, he was a guy. So um, I talked to him about two months in the cruise or so, and he says to me, hey, man, I don't know who put this in together, but he's, uh, he's either a genius or an idiot because apparently like the main shaft was in backwards and everything was just riding on it. So the fact that anything worked was pretty much amazing is, you know, what he was saying. So I'm like, great. And he's trying to find parts. And then everybody's telling me, go with five speed, go with five speed. I'm like, man, I don't really want to do that, man, because I'm like a you know, traditional type of dude. I kind of want to, I mean, this thing's got kickstart only, right? Drum brakes front and back. You know, it's, uh, I mean, look at it, right? It's like, it's still got the California blue plate on it. And it's just, why would I want to, nah, keep it four speed. So, takes a little while. He builds it. I get off deployment, I pick it up, and it's great. I love it, right? I ride it for, uh, for like a year or so, maybe a little more than that. I would take it to work. Now, I would transfer it out of China Lake now, so I'm like, it's about 20 miles to work. So like once or twice a week, I'd ride it to work. And uh, it was awesome. I didn't have any issues with it. It would kick over first or second kick, and it was just nice, right? A little ride every now and then. So, like I said, it wasn't my main. I had a through all sorts of trades. I had a ninja at the time too. Uh, I think I'm a Kawasaki guy. I don't know how that happened, but uh, it was like an 03 ZX ZX6 R. Yeah, it's a cool bike. Um, and that that was actually the most reliable thing I've been on my life. But so I'd ride that most of the time. But you know, I'd take this guy out when I. Somewhere I didn't need to be because I still didn't 100% trust it. Even though the trans was rebuilt, um, it's still a 74 shovel head. So 
It sits over the winter. I think I might have done a deployment or something. I forget how it all went down. Um, and I'm about to ride to work one day. I come home, well, yeah, I'm going to ride it out. So I finally get it running again. Okay, cool. And it really didn't take much. Like I said, it was always a first, second kick type of bike. So I go to pull out of the driveway. I grab the clutch, kick down in the gear, and the bike just takes off. So apparently my clutch ain't working. So I end up laying it down in the grass there to not take out Megan's car or, or my truck. And uh, I was, huh, all right, we'll figure this out. So I put it away, I jump on the Ninja, get to work. And then um, my buddy Nick comes over. You guys know Nick, he's got a 55 Chevy. So before he joined the Navy, he was a motorcycle mechanic. So he comes over, let's check it out. We pull it apart and the clutches were like all seized together. Just bad, right? So we clean everything up, we oil everything, put it all back together. Everything seems to be working fine, but it's creeping up on midnight and this thing's up like straight pipes in it. So I'm in a small neighborhood in California and so I just fired up. So I think maybe the next day or whatever it was, I kick that thing over, fires up, kick it in the gear, it's great. I take off, it won't come out of first gear. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me, man, right? So that was that, right? I put it put it away. All right, Nick's gonna come over and check it out. Well, I ended up transferring, and it was a whole thing, and that's how I ended up here. So we I, we go out and buy a closed trailer just for this bike because I absolutely love this thing. Stick it in there. Megan tows it across country because I'm driving the moving truck with my '65 behind it. It turned into, you know, you could have wrote a country song about this move, right? I think I mentioned it before with the truck when I told that story, but it was bad. All right. Megan's transmission goes out in Virginia. My buddy tows the trail the rest of the way. We get everything settled. It, it takes, so it seems like forever to get settled in this house. Finally, we're good, right? So, um. All right, let me mess with this bike and see what's going on, right? So this was like November we moved there, right? And it's, you know, the East Coast, Maryland, it's a little cold. So it was like March time frame. And I'm like, all right, let me see what's up with this bike. Get it running, kick it over. She's idling great, just like always, right? Kick it in the gear. Okay. Now, Nick was actually moving. He, you know, I was with him out in California. He was moving here too. So I was like, well, let me see what's up. So I'll get a job for him if we can't get this right, you know? So uh, I jump on the bike, I take for a ride. It runs like a million dollars. It's kicking through all the gears, it's downshifting. I'm like, what happened? I did nothing, we did nothing from this time, right? Just let it sit for, I don't know, a couple months. So, okay. Well, I'm about five, 10 miles away from the house and I realize I smell fuel. I look down and the accelerator pump is just dumping onto the exhaust. I'm like, oh, let me get home. Actually, I probably went like five miles home. So when I was throttling it, it wasn't terrible. So I, boom, I get home. Nick says, hey, let's just rebuild the car. This is where things went terribly all right. <laughs> so we did. Neither one of us were all that familiar with the older style. It's a Zenith car, right? Which, it's not great. But it's period correct, so I left, I want the heap chair. Nick's telling me, get a CV carb. Nick went as far as going out, buying me a CV carb, and tell me, let's put it on this bike. And then we had a hard time finding adapters for it and whatnot, so I was like, you know what? I just want to leave it how it was. So we do that. It's got like a leather plunger style, and uh, it, it we we couldn't get it to fit, so we trimmed it, which was, don't ever do that. It's that size for a reason. So it didn't work, right? Um, so then uh, my buddy Louie, who was an old school type of dude, was like, oh, I got that, man, yeah. So we rebuilt it, and uh, it seems to be working better, but still not right. Now, mind you, we're not solely working on this. Like, we had other things going on all the time. I was like, hey, let's, you know, we got a little bit of time, let's work on it. So that's what we did. Uh, so then... I kind of just got frustrated, stuck it in the corner, and said, I'll get to it when I get to it. Well, then 
I mean, Kevin, and hey, man, let's get that thing going. Because I didn't have the Rogue Glide at the time. I didn't have the FXR. I had this bike, this silhouette, and I had a Victory, which that's another story. This thing, got that thing for like a thousand bucks. I only had 7,000 miles on it. And it was, it was beat up a little bit, but it, it, I thought it ran great. Until one day I kicked the fifth gear or fourth gear, whatever it was, and the trans locked up, and I don't know how I did everything I could to keep that thing up. Um, that's still, since long gone, I gave it to my brother. He ended up selling it. Another story out of my life and Joe, so we're good. So Kevin's like, let's get the shovel head going. So that's a solid point. Let's do that. Kevin comes over. It was Christmas Day, and uh, we start you know, let's build the car. So we do. We used part of the root. So another problem is these rebuild kits are not very good that you get for these Zenith carbs. They're made in China. They're whatever. Um, so after like two or three one rebuild kits, we had all the proper parts to make this work. So we put it all together, and, then, and you know, you know, Kevin is thorough. So hey, man fuel filter, fuel line, pet cut, let's do all that stuff. So we did, we did all of it. Whole fuel system is legit. And it works flawless. Cool. Twist the whole throttle, psh, psh, spits out like it should, everything's dead on. Okay, cool. So now I got a rebuild card, and a carb, a new um, accelerator pump, we got new fuel lines, new everything, throttle cable, I mean, everything is new. All right, man, we should be good to go. So we uh, start kicking on his bike and we ain't got no spark. Now I've been sitting two years now, probably at this point in the game. Okay. Maybe longer, maybe three. I don't know. It was a minute. Okay. So we start messing with it, looking for spark, looking at stuff. Kevin sees the wiring. Now I probably should have told you this in the first place. This bike, so 74, right, which is AMF years. So everybody cries about the AMF bikes. My personal opinion, if AMF, yeah, I get it, they're, they're a bowling alley place or whatever, bowling alley company. If they didn't buy the company and run it like they did, it would have gone away. So, you know what? I'm glad they did. And, I mean, the shovel head came out in 66, so it's the same design, right? It should have been fine. They had some weird things, I got it, but that's another story in itself as well. This bike is actually registered as a special construction. So if you look at it, and I looked at it, and I was like, huh, this looks like a survivor. Like they said, the blue tag, the drum brakes on it. Then I started looking at some things, and actually, the guy that did the trans pointed out to me that there's some stuff cut up on this frame that's a little older than the 74, probably more like late 60s. Harley stopped drum brakes in 72, so obviously that front wheel is not a 74. Um, it's got the, 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 what do you call it, the hinged rear fender, and that's something kind of rare, and everybody makes a big deal about it. I don't, you know, it's cool. You need to change your tire, but uh, that was stopped before that, from what I, I believe, don't quote me on that one. Um, and it's just like, you know, all these little things that is, I, you can still get to see it's, it's not a survivor. Somebody did a real good job hacking this thing together. And it's very obvious in the wiring. There may be some parts that have a speaking wire on there. But you guys know Kevin. That ain't cool. And I get it. He's right. It, it ain't the way to do it. So he's like, man, let's get a wiring harness and we do this whole thing. And I was just frustrated with it again. And um, I just bought the Roguelide, and I was like, I don't really care about it right now. I don't want to just ride. Since then, it's sat here. Now, I did go buy a new battery for it, and it's actually on the charger right now because I'm tired of this thing just sitting here. There's plenty of shows I'd like to take it to. I just like to get out and ride it. There's some things I want to do to make it more period correct, um, and I'll, I'll show you a couple of those little things here in a minute, but... Um, this thing cleans up amazing. Now, granted, it's been sitting on here and it's full of dust and all that, but it cleans up amazing. It sounds awesome. 
it's just cool. It ain't fast. It ain't gonna handle, but it's just cool, you know? So, I think, I think we're creeping up on the time that some of this stuff that's been sitting around needs to get worked on. And uh, instead of wasting all our time on hard bodies and whatnot, let's work on some stuff we wanna work on, right? And this guy right here, I mean, there was, there's a time I almost traded that thing. I wanted a bagger uh, years ago. I was still out in Lamar. And uh, I found a, you know, a guy in Ultra or something like that. He wanted to trade straight up. I went as far as riding it to his house. I was like right there. And as soon as I saw it and I looked back at, at this bike and I said, nah, I'll never find another one. Now, granted, because of how it's, you know, it's a special construction, it's not worth not that shovel heads are bringing crazy money or nothing like that, or maybe someday they will, but I don't think so. I don't know. You never know. You never know what's going to bring money. But uh, it ain't costing me a dime sitting there. So there's no need for me to like get rid of it, right? And I'm glad I didn't get rid of it that day because I was, I was close. I was real close, but uh, I stand by, by my decision for sure. So... Uh, so I'm going to take you off the tripod. I'll give you a little walk around. And um, you guys let me know what you think. All right, so we figured to start from this angle that you haven't been staring at for a while. And a couple of things I mentioned, right? So, still got the California blue tag on it, which if you're a California guy, you know, it's kind of a big deal. It's got the uh, swing rear fender here, which, and look at this pinstripe. You don't really see it. This, this is all hand done. Right, it's not like some sticker crap or whatever. And the dude even, you know, he signed it down there. You can tell it ain't perfect. That's what I love about it, right? So, uh, it's got the same exhaust like every shovel head does, has on it, just straight piped, you know? Um, it's kind of like an early Dyna frame, maybe, I guess, with the, I don't know. But, uh, it's a kickstart only, which, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll leave it at that, right? Um, you can see I got the pinstripe all up here. I love this old symbol. Zenith carb, all brand new. This is where our issue is right now, or at least we think, but we'll get there, right? Uh, got here. Ooh, that doesn't look good. Let's see. Uh, do I have a rear brake anymore? Uh, maybe. It's been sitting for a while. That that's yeah. Oh god, yeah. That needs replaced. We'll put that on the list. Uh, if you notice, the only peg is here, and that's because your front brake pretty much sucks. So you need to stand on this guy to make it stop. So since that's what's going on, yeah, we're gonna get that right. That back brake actually works really well. The front drum pretty much just holds you on a hill, no matter how you seem to adjust this thing. Um. So it's got the, uh, the old Avon tires here, which uh, yeah, they seem better days. And these things are, phew. I got this bike 2009. These tires are on it. Yeah, they're getting replaced. This is one thing I added, and I love it. It's like an 80s little tool bag because there ain't nowhere to put nothing on it, you know? So uh, this I added, kind of regret that. That's the, uh, you know, the My First Harley mirrors. They will be coming off. This I didn't add. I thought it was a reflector when I first got the bike. It's actually turn signals. And I see what he tried to do, but they are not very correct. It doesn't look very good. So I don't mind a little shade on here. Here's your, actually your high beam. Yeah, that's that. Uh, and actually here's your, uh, your rear turn signals. So you just try to make it slim and I appreciate that, but Kind of missed the mark on some things, I think. So here, uh, I told you, I was charging the battery. Look at how big that guy is, huh? It doesn't do nothing except for keep the circuit going, right? I don't think Megan would ever sit up here, and I really wouldn't want her because this is kind of, like I said, brakes alone, guys. You know, <laughs> these things are... So here's some of the scariness, right? We got, uh, yeah, lots of stuff done like this. I didn't do this, guys. Not to say I wouldn't, but I didn't. So this is what, yeah, it's not good. So that's what needs done is this wiring stuff. And 
I am definitely getting the itch to get it done because, uh, well, there's a few reasons. Number one, this bike is badass and I want it on the road. I want to ride it. I want to enjoy it. And uh, there's a couple things I want to do to it. But uh, and it just cleans up. I'm telling you, that's, you get it, right? You get it. And we got this other project over here that we uh, picked up from a friend for nothing. And I want that thing up on the lift. And I want to be able to ride that thing. So that's it. You know, doesn't seem like uh, rocket science, but uh, yeah. Well, there you have it, guys. The story of my 74 shovel head, how I got it, why I still have it, which that should be easy to figure out, right? Why she's been living on the lift and became nothing more than uh, a cool backdrop for the, for the channel. Now you know all those things. So leave a comment down below. Let me know. You want to see us get this thing going? You know, I'd like to see it going. I'd like to make a big thing on the channel of kind of all the Harley stuff because this guy needs to be back on the road. We got a little bit of work to do on the road glide because, uh, you know, we got a trip coming up. Man. I'll tell you what. And we got some work to do on this FXR since, uh, well, you know. So, like I said, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Till then, like, share, subscribe. Ring the bell, tell a friend, and as always, thanks for watching, guys.